Hi guys, it's a miserable wet day outside, so I've got no excuse for not sitting inside and having a look at this 3D printed boat I've been sent to work on. Now, the first thing I need to do is drill a hole through the middle of the prop shaft um, area here. I started off using a normal electric drill and made a little bit of progress. This is the first time I've touched 3D printing or something made using 3D printing and fairly quickly I realised that as soon as it heats up again it starts to melt. So I was being very gentle trying to get this to go in there and it was clogging up and I could feel it was going soft so what I ended up doing was using this bit of bicycle spoke. I filed a point on the end of it and I gently worked that in there and allowed it to get hot. And as it gets hot, it melts its own way through there. But you still need to keep it straight. But I have managed to get all the way through. So, we're through, but because I still need to open that hole up a bit more. So I have to find myself a, a bigger bit of wire and do the same thing and try and work my way up through there. The other alternative was just to cut that right out. Just have a single hole through the hull and the rest of it would be the prop shaft tube anyway. But I do rather like the way I've managed to get through there. I didn't think I was going to manage. I worked at it slowly, kept my fingers on either side so I could feel exactly where it was hot and getting soft. And just gently worked my way along. So I'm going to class that as step one and first success. I've been reading about how to actually join the parts of the boat together. There seems to be quite a lot of ideas as to how to do it. Um, friction weld is one method where you just get it hot again. And when you put the two pieces together, they will seal themselves if they're both hot. Um, various types of glue to use. And also heat welding it. Again, getting it hot and sticking it together when it's hot. Uh, even using a soldering iron and scrap uh, whatever this stuff is, PLA or whatever, and using that to fill the gap. Uh, this one's got some, I uh, can't know what to call them, ties that will actually, they're the shape of the inside of the hull, and they're about uh, two centimetres wide, and they're actually supposed to go over the gap and glue that in place to give it strength. Anyway, I've got my hole through, but I need to make it bigger. Just a little follow on from that last bit. I ended up actually using the brass tube to drill the hole out to the size I needed. I managed to get that aluminium rod through, but I still needed the hole to be bigger. So I've got this brass tube and got it all the way through. So I intend that to be my um, propeller shaft tube, which I'll tidy it up a bit. That's through there. Well, I don't know if this stuff will work or not. I did a fair bit of reading about joining bits of this PLA stuff. 
One of the suggestions suggested this sort of stuff. I think I've been ripped off buying it. It's extremely expensive and when I've opened it, it's like almost like jelly inside. I think it's already gone off this stuff. So I think I've been uh so I think I've been ripped off. But I've used it. I've got it all clamped in position. Hold in position for 10 seconds, wipe off any excess. Joint should not be disturbed for at least 10 minutes. After which they may be handled, but with care, allow 24 hours before applying any pressure. Yeah, I think I should use two part epoxy, but we'll find out. Sorry to be a bit negative, but I'm. Yeah, not very happy pen paying that sort of money for something that I think was actually faulty in the shop. And of course, now that I've used it, I can't really take it back, can I? So, the question is, did that glue work at all? The noise is the washing machine in the background. Okay. Well, that feels okay. The only thing is, I didn't get it butted up well enough when I did it. Corners are all right. Middle's a bit of a gap, so I need to fill that in some way or other. Well, technically I don't need to fill it at all, because it's still going to float whether it's got a gap there or not. If I was a regular 3D printer guy, I'd have some of the spare PLA um, rod, or whatever you want to call it, and you'd just melt it into there with something like a soldering iron or something to fill the gap. So, I don't know, I'll find something to fill it with, but at least that seems to have done the job. I was very dubious, but it does seem to have worked. So the next thing, I need to glue that bit on there. So we have our boat shape. And finish off what I was doing with the propeller shaft tube, which at the moment <laughs> is a little bit too long. So, yeah, that's that appears to be good news at the moment. I was very doubtful. That's the second join. Might try and fill the gaps a little bit. If I was confident, I'd use something hot and just smooth it over. Need to trim them down a bit. And then we need to fit the motor. Now, he had already started, he rigged up this motor, which obviously is a brushless. I've added this bicycle spoke 
and some silicon tubing to connect it together at the moment. I've actually got some proper little, um, uh, what do you call them? Well, proper joints uh, on order, but they're on order from uh, AliExpress or eBay or whatever. So they may take a while to come. So I need to organize this at the right position. It's supposed to go right back there, actually. So I have to take those nuts and bolts out that he's put in there already. up at a bit of an angle at the moment, so that's a bit stiff. I had to heat up my tube and melt the plastic a bit to get the alignment right, because it actually come through at a bit of an angle when I drilled the hole. So it's not quite as neat as it was when I first drilled it. Now we're getting closer. One thing I didn't mention when I was talking about this boat, I looked at the videos of the original designer and he just holds the sections together with duct tape, which I thought was brilliant. I love duct tape. Might have to put a ESC on there, just so we can give it a little test, see what that's like. Because if this binds too much, then the prop shaft will get hot, and then it will all start melting, which won't be good. Just a very, very temporary lash up, so we can test that motor. So I'm using the receiver that I've got in there, one of the ESCs that I've been sent in the box. Uh, I've got a 3S LiPo down there. So, we have a working ESC, a working brushless motor, working on one of my existing receivers. Yeah, okay, that'll do for today. Another step on the way, fitted the servo and the rudder. I've actually used the rudder assembly that my friend had already started using in his uh, original build when he started doing it. So I thought I might as well make use of what he'd already done. Uh, you may notice I've got rather a long bit of excess wire sticking out here. That's because I've had an idea. This little fella appeared in one of my very old videos. Uh, he actually gripped onto a zip wire that went down from our bedroom window down to the back fence there with a camera just for the fun of it. I also gave him a beard. <laughs> But I reckon that I can make him stand in the back of the boat and his hand can be on the, on the tiller. 
to steer the boat. That's my plan, just to make it a bit of fun. So, oh, we're getting closer. This will just be a short video today. At the moment, I'm still linking it into this boat, just so I can check it all works. Obviously, I could just use a servo tester, but I just thought this was an easy way of doing it. I've actually used hot glue to put the servo in place because the little plastic plate it was on seemed a little bit flexible to me. So I've actually put a fair bit of hot glue around it to make it all a little bit more rigid to stop it flexing up and down. Yeah, he's rocking around a bit at the moment, but I've only just put a few spots of hot glue on his feet to hold him in place. Yeah, he might add a little bit of fun to it. I think I know what that one is. I think that's a a good sized switch, not one of those little micro switches, a man sized switch. Oh yes. <laughs> yeah, a little bit over the top. Um, I want that as the on off switch on a bo boat that I'm putting together. This one. It was going to have a, a little micro switch on it, just here. I just thought I'd see if I could put a man size switch on there. Yeah. A bit over the top. I just thought it'd be a bit of fun. Hi guys, just filling up this little paddling pool. It's the old one, the dirty one, that we don't use anymore. Uh, filling it up so I can just test the little blue sailing boat. Uh, there was a tiny breeze blowing across the garden earlier, so I was going to see whether it got propelled along. But Venus, we've got some water in there. I'm going to put the uh, new boat in there, the 3D printed boat. It's really not quite ready for sea trials. <laughs> Oh, to go out and do it properly. I haven't waterproofed anything in it. But we can at least have a look to see if it works, if it floats. Got my nice big man-sized on-off switch. So... We'll see if it floats. It floats. See if we can give it a tiny little bit of power. Uh, when I was testing it earlier, that motor tended to shoot off at full power with the slightest throttle. And because we've got no reverse.
Yeah. We might have enough power there. I'm not used to having no reverse, though. So. I've got the rudder reversed, haven't I? sunk my sailing boat. Well, I think we can say it looks like it'll work. Well, there seems to be something funny about that servo, to be honest. I'm sure it's changed direction. Ah, no, I think we're okay. Right, well, that'll do for part whatever it is. I can't remember what number we're up to. But I need to waterproof the receiver, which I'll probably take it apart and cover it in nail varnish. And yeah, give it a try somewhere. I was just watching the video back that I shot with it in the paddling pool and I thought I'd missed something. I thought my brain had gone funny or something like that. But that servo is playing up. I'll just demonstrate what I mean. Uh, switch it on, throttle down. Okay, so if I go right Rudder goes right. Remember, we're going that direction. Go left. 
it goes left, and then it does this overcorrection. I don't know what that's about. Go right, go left, no, sorry, just said that the wrong way around. Go left, go right, go left, right, left, and it, yeah, it does some sort of overcorrection for some reason. I thought I was, um, I thought my brain had gone funny, I thought I was missing things, but yeah, it's definitely playing up. Right, left, right, left, overcorrect. That's weird. I've never seen one do anything like that before. Looks like it's alright if I keep my finger on it. But if I go... Yeah. What's that about? Uh, let's just shift that to the, uh, what will that be, elevator position? Channel 2 anyway. Yeah, so now we're... Yeah, it's doing the same thing. Uh, what else can we do? I suppose we could try it with that receiver again. Power off. Okay, right, yeah it's doing the same thing, so it's not the receiver, because that's a different receiver, it's something to do with that servo, question is, do I change it out, or do I risk it? And it looks like it's quite alright if I don't do full... Oh, it did it then. I was going to say it looked like it was alright if I didn't do full left or right. Oh, that's annoying. We were on the point of actually trying it out on the boating lake. And that's the servo that I put loads of hot glue around it to stiffen it up because it all seemed a bit loose on the back there, a bit too flexible. All right, a step backwards. Now I'm getting really confused. I've just swapped it for the other servo that came in the pack. Just check we can see. It's doing the same thing. So, swap that servo out. 
for one of my own cheap eBay special put them in the right way around Somewhat weird, isn't there? It's doing the same thing. Not as pronounced. seems to have settled down, although I can feel it chuntering a little bit. seemed to be okay, although it did something funny when I started. Where's that other one? Uh, could it be anything, could it have been anything to do with the wire was wrapped around the end motor leads? No. I'm still doing that overcorrect. No, it's nothing to do with the motor lead. Uh, how about is it my extension lead? No, nope, it's not the extension lead. Change back to my brand new server. It's chuntering away there, I can feel it. Let's stop now. I don't suppose we got low battery or something funny with that. Um, that's quite hot actually. That ESC. I'll check me um, battery. Four point oh seven, four point oh eight, four point oh eight. That's well, not bad. Uh, 
Uh, what else can we try? Try a different transmitter. Oh, I don't think it's... A, it's something to do with those servos, I'm sure. Maybe they're not compatible with my receiver. Well, it does look like it's something to do with those servos and maybe they're just not compatible with my FlySky receiver. Because so I've just rebound my receiver with one of my other FlySky transmitters and we're getting exactly the same problem. be a problem if I'm actually pushing it a bit fast, couldn't it? It looks like it's all right as long as I don't let it self-centre. No. Looks like it's when it goes. Yeah. Might have to change over to this one then. Apart from the fact that it feels like it's vibrating to me. We don't seem to be getting that overcorrection. Yeah, so like I said, a bit annoying. Gonna have to unglue that one and glue this one in. One of the reasons for screwing them in instead of gluing them. But as I say, I put the extra glue in there to make it rigid against the back. New servo, back to the old transmitter everything else the way it was that would appear to have fixed the problem the only thing is I've screwed that servo in instead of gluing it and that's all flexing a little bit Well, I don't think it's going to matter. So that'll do. So, as I said before, next stage, waterproof the receiver. That's probably all I'll bother to do. I don't think I'll do anything with the ESC. I suppose I could take that heat shrink off it and coat the inside. We could just risk it. I'm more worried about the receiver, personally. I 
yeah, happy with that. Hi guys, I did mention that I was going to put some nail varnish on my receiver, so I thought I'd better just demonstrate. They are very small screw heads. I might have to change the screwdriver a bit because that one's making a mess. I have found in the past when I have got my receivers wet it's usually around these pins. Now getting the pins wet isn't a problem it's when you get the crystals build up between them. I just think the only way to cure that would be to get the nail varnish right underneath and it doesn't really flow that well so I can just do the best I can. That's a little push switch, you don't really want to um, gum that up with the varnish. Sun's coming out. So I'll just say that again, the place that I've found problems isn't any of this, it's underneath those pins, right underneath the black plastic bits, the water gets under there, then when you've got the current flow that creates the crystals that grow up underneath. Probably put far too much on there now. Obviously you don't want to actually cover those pins, otherwise you've got no electrical contact when you plug your servo in there and your ESC. So, that's it. 
that's varnished my receiver. You could do your ESC as well, but I'm not going to at this time. Nail varnish is dry. Looks like we've got a good coating. What I'm looking for is just to make sure I haven't got any nail varnish up on these tags. I've got a little bit just there. The rest of them look okay. So can we get it back in? Try it out. Okay, so we've got a waterproofed receiver. So, so I'm not going to worry about the ESC, mainly because I have to cut it open to get the varnish on it. Um, yeah, I'm just not going to bother. So, ready to go and See if it floats. Hi guys, down at Porter's Head, at the boating lake and the duck pond. So, this will be the maiden voyage for the 3D printed boat. I'm just going to take it gentle, just in case it sinks. If I was more confident, then I'd go out on the main boating lake. But for today, we're just going in there. I've also brought my little sailing boats. So we might have a go with them in a minute, because it's a bit windy. Well, we're floating. Okay, so we are all right at low power. Give it a little bit more. Oh. 
be touching the bottom there. up a little bit of water there when I gave it full throttle. Let's see how we feel for heat. Oh, only, a, only lukewarm, not even hot. TSC, lukewarm. of the birds, ducks. that water in there.
Right. Well, there we go. It works. Hi guys, a supplementary video for this um, 3D printed boat. You might remember on episode, oh, what was it, four or five or six or something, I was getting trouble with one of the servos. It was overcorrecting itself. So I replaced it. That, that was one of these ones that was overcorrecting, and that's one of my servos in there. And. Uh, See if we can demonstrate. So we're on. Uh, if I just go left, right, it'll operate that servo. All right, seems to be absolutely fine. If I go up, down, I've actually got it connected up to this servo. So we've got this overcorrection going on. In fact, it goes quite wild. So, off, on again. That's really playing up now. And really weird. Okay, switch it off. Unplug that ESC. Plug in an alternative ESC. Oh, run out of space. Okay, alternative ESC. Left, right, happy. So, it looks like it's that ESC that's playing up, not the servo, not the receiver, not the transmitter, nothing to do with the gimbals, it's actually that ESC. Out of the three ESCs I could have chosen, it looks like it's that one. Uh, it's where are we? Let's unplug the battery so we don't get confused. Let's disconnect that one. Disconnect that one, which is the one we were just using. Which I've had to do several adapter leads just so I can make use of it. So plug this one back in again. To its normal position. Power on. Yeah, it's weird. It's some sort of interaction between that servo, uh, that ESC, and that servo. If I unplug that servo, off and on again. We don't have a problem. So my servo and that ESC is happy. This servo and that ESC off, on, put that one in, power on. As long as I don't use that servo, we're all right. Use that servo. We're, we're in a mess. Off. Let's just plug that servo into the rudder position, just in case 
Is anything funny there? Home. Yeah, it's it's not the position on the receiver. It's that ESC and that servo. Change the ESC. Unplug that. Plug back in this other ESC. Get it the right way round. In the right place. Swap the battery over. Okay, so this is the other ESC. The servo that plays up. Does a little crack there, doesn't it? Yes, yeah, got a little bit of a wobble there. What's my battery like at the moment? Because I haven't. Point one three, four point oh eight, four point one four, twelve point three overall. So it's certainly not flat. I mean, that's the other thing. It may be that it wants an absolutely fully charged battery to do the do the business. But yeah, it looks like the ESC that I picked out of the pack with the servo that I picked out the pack don't like each other. An alternative ESC that I picked out the pack seems to be okay, although it has got just a little bit of a twitch in there. Yeah, just there. So, I'm not going to bother changing the ESC, I'm going to leave the one in there that was working because I'll use that receipt, uh, that servo and it's happy with that servo, but it does seem to be an ESC and servo compatibility problem, which may be something to do with the um, FlySky receiver in the middle there somewhere don't know. But yeah, it looks like there's a an incompatibility between the whole setup. And if I revert back to my old servo, it's quite happy. So I take that one off, unplug that, plug that one back in. Power on, this will play up. Oh, ah. not point, point switching the power on if we don't plug the battery in. Plug the battery in. Power on. Yeah, and we got that problem straight away. Switch it off. Take that servo off. Put my servo back on. Power on. Watching the rudder. No problem. So, that may help some of the people who are offering me advice. Um, it may be an incompatibility of the complete setup. I use FlySky because it's cheap on eBay. So Fly, FlySky transmitter, FlySky receiver. Uh, I wouldn't know which brand servos I'm using. They were just the cheapest I could get on eBay. 9 gram servos. And set up like that, it works. If I use that servo we get problems 
BRC Hobbies BRC 9HT High Torque. So, get problems if we use that one with that ESC. If we use that ESC, we don't get as much of a problem. It had a little bit of a quiver, but not quite as much of a problem. So, don't know. But I'm not going to worry about it because it works for me. Hey, thanks for watching. There's plenty of videos on my main channel with more added daily, so don't forget to subscribe and enable the notifications to keep you up to date with my new releases. You can help keep my channel running by donating a dollar on Patreon to buy me coffee. You can always find more information in the video description. Thanks again for watching.